problem we're going to discuss can be solved with a very simple idea that if you move all the money in this cash flow diagram to any point in time of your choosing what should be the final value yeah. zero right it's as simple as that the rest is all up to you where you point choose to move I think in this case it might be most convenient to move all the money here not necessary you could also move all the money here eventually you'll all get the same answer but conceptually I think it's a little bit comforting to think of, okay, you're going to add up all the value of this annuity till this point in time. In some sense, that's the amount of money you have in the bank. And so then you spread it into five payments. Now, some of you were saying the right thing, but you were saying you could equate this value to five times 30. That's wrong. What's wrong with this problem? What's wrong there? Yeah? Very good. So from now on, today, I want you all to make me a promise. If money is paid at different point in time, you will never try to just multiply the per month by the number of months. You all make a promise? Because money at different point in time is worth different. If you make other mistakes, it's okay, I understand. Please do not make this mistake ever again, where you multiply the money per month by the number of months, right? Because you can't do that, because of course you want to generate interest, which means money, but the simple idea is, money at different points in time is worth different. This 30 is not the same as this 30, so you can't add that. Which one is worth more? This or this? Second one is worth more? Money, if you're getting money, earlier the money you get, the better because you can make interest on it. If you were to give money, the later the money you give, the better it is for you, right? So in some sense, this is worth more because by this time, this 30 could have more interest, right? All right, very good. So now, now once we said that, really the idea is all, that you can compute everything pretty easily. Let's first compute the value of this A, all the annuities at this point in time, which could be called the future value, right? And you can apply the future value formula, but it's a little bit tricky. And the reason is because if you remember, usually when I told you, I think last time when I derived formula for annuity, I, I did not take any money. I said P here, right? So there was no payment at time zero. 
So either you can, but now is the payment at time zero, so you can use the formula, but you have to think a little bit cleverly. But right now, I'm not going to use the formula. I'm just going to use the standard way it should be done. I'm going to move all the money here, right? So for this time, I'm going to start with this payment. So this payment, of course, how, how much is this payment going to be worth at this point in time? A, right? No, no, not the, I'm, not, I'm going to take those separately. I'm just going to first look at these separately and those separately. So this is going to be just worth A, right? Okay. Plus the previous payment, what will this one be? This will be worth? Precise. Very good. Plus dot, 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 dot. The last payment, which is the, well, the first payment, will be worth how much? A, 1 plus I, to the power? Sorry? 167 or 168? 157. Oh, sorry, 157 or 158? 157. Oh, sorry, 156 or 157? 156. Are you sure? 156. 156. The number of terms is 157, right? But this power should be the time elapsed from this point to this point, right? And that's only 156 months. The number of payments is 157. Does it make sense? All right. And another way of thinking of it is that the first has 1 plus i to the power 0, so this is to the power 156. OK, now we can think in terms of compound interest formula. So the sum of it is always P 1 plus i to the power n <coughs> over 1 plus i. Right? OK? Or oh, 1 plus r, sorry. OK, so what is b in this case? A, a very good. b is always the first term in the summation. That's a. Okay, one plus what is R? This one plus one plus R. Very good. R is one plus I. What is N? One fifty seven. N is the number of terms. Okay, N is the number of terms. So what is that? One fifty seven. Very good. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be 1 minus, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. should have remembered that the future value, the way we computed it, would not take this into account, right? So then you would have to finally take that into account as well, right? The standard future value you could have computed is always A, right? Uh, 1, 12. Do you want me to do using future value formula, or you're OK with what I've done? I don't want to confuse you too much. Sorry? Can you do them both? OK, so the future value, remember, the future value of an annuity is A, right? 1 plus i bar n minus 1 divided by i. Right? OK, Wait, what is n? 157. Sorry? 157. Uh, 157 or 156? 157. Remember, in, well, you know what? I don't want to confuse too much, but let's just calculate the future value, okay? Without this term, okay? Because that's how typically annuities are, right? We'll first calculate the future value without this, and then we'll calculate the future value with this. Just so that hopefully it clarifies any confusion that you may have. All right, but the point.
point I'm trying to make is it's dangerous to just use formulas for f and p. It's just safe to write it like this and use the geometric formula of summation. You will never make a mistake. If you try to think of f and p, you could make a mistake between, OK, what is n? Right? Because it's a little bit tricky. So we are not, so I'm going to skip this zero payment right now because this is a time zero. Usually, the way you structure annuities, you don't make a payment there. So we're going to calculate that. So in that case, it will be the first term, but we are still going to start from this side. Last time I started from bringing all the payment here. Today I'm going to start it here. So it's going to be a plus a, 1 plus i, plus 1 plus a, 1 plus i, to the power 1. This payment is not there now, right? This is the last payment for the usually way, usually we write it. So it will be to the power? 156. 156 minus 1, which is 155. Does it make sense? That's, a, that's just because that's how you need annuities usually are. Because when you buy when you buy a car from a dealer, you don't make a payment at time zero. Or if you do, it is not called an annuity, it's called a down payment, which automatically gets subtracted. Right? So you don't make the annuity payment at that time. You make the annuity payment at the end of the month. That's why this is usually not there. That's why when we calculate the future value of what you call annuity, we don't include that term. Right? But you can see here there's an extra term. This is an extra term. Because of the way I structured the problem, I say you make this payment here. Is this confusing or is it all sort of quite clear? Like I said, I was perfectly happy to not make that payment, but you guys all said, no, you have to make a payment at time zero also. So I included that. But I'm glad I did, because this hopefully helps you see that if you just try to think in terms of F and P, you may sometimes get the answer wrong. Okay. All right. So, uh, so anyway, in our case, this is the correct answer. So the future value, if you would compute this like this, it would be D, which is A, right? 1 minus R, R in this case is 1 plus I, to the power number of terms, which is 156, divided by R. Right? <laughs> Sorry? No, if you, have, if you don't have this term here, right? Oh. The number of terms is only 156. Now, of course, if you add, the question is, what happens if you add another term, which is A, times 1 plus i to the power, what will be the value of this term over there? 13 what, times 12. 157. Right? Uh, Let's just start from scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, negative on the bottom. Sorry? I yeah. Oh, yeah, if you're writing it this way, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you're yeah. writing it this way, then yes. Okay. I think I have confused you guys a lot, but I don't know how to avoid it. One more, one more. Let's just do one more. Oh, yeah, I switched around. Oh, yeah. yeah. So really, it's... Wait, wait, wait. Is that a negative or no negative? Uh, I think y'all are too lost. I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so how do I... How do I do this in a way that you don't get confused? Just, just one way. Don't do it. 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 Don't Okay. I will try to stick to a situation where you don't have a payment there. Fine? So then you can use the future, you can use the standard formulas. 156, 156. Okay? So as long as, yeah. Uh, how do you determine whether or not you're like solving a future value of an annuity or a principle of an annuity? Well, you just look at the problem.